and drying the dishes and then setting the table for a party. Now, if it's a high protocol party, the dishes and silverware has to be set in a specific type of fashion, which I which means um each fork or each plate has to be in a specific spot. As a submissive or slave, when you are finished from eating from the table, you are not to get up from the table. You are to sit at that table and place your silverware in a totally different direction so the doms know that you are, in fact, finished, okay? So it's kind of an interesting topic because, you know, um, basically domestic, hold on, domestic servitude. A lot of you fellas online think it's like you're going to move into the dominance house and just have 24-7 hours play of BDSM type stuff. That is not exactly what it is, okay? So it's basically you're going to be, you know, in a stable with a mistress's house with yourself and multiple slaves and each one of you has specific duties to do, right? So it's basically a domestic servitude is a normal practice for live and help, right? Um, so whether I have a chauffeur, somebody to do laundry, someone to clean, somebody, you know, to take care of things in the house, it's basically a form of forced labor. So you're going to be moving in with this mistress and you're going to be cooking and cleaning and becoming her permanent 24-7 live-in slave. So if you do work, you'll still continue to work your regular day job, but all of your earnings goes to the house, basically. So each submissive who works, their paycheck is to be turned over to the dominant and she is to do with it as she sees fit, like pay bills or, um, you know, buy groceries or whatever it is, right? So that form of domestic servitude is pretty interesting. When I lived in upstate, excuse me, New York, I had a husband and children living in a household, and I had two or three slaves at the time and one submissive. Two, two subs or two slaves of mine both lived with me on different occasions, Right? And when they both lived with me, they thought it was going to be all fun and games and they would be able to play with mistress for hours and hours and hours, not realizing that that wasn't exactly what their stuff curtailed. They were supposed to cook and clean. One was to do laundry. One was to do something else. And basically, you know, they had to do it within a specific time period. There was a one time that I had gone out with my husband at the time when I was married and children in tow and left the slaves home and told them, gave them a list of duties that had to have been done. Well, you know the old saying, when the mice is away, the cats will, when the cats are away, the mice will play, right? So I come back from my dinner party with family and friends and I walk in the house and these two fucking submissive slaves of mine are laying on their couch, my couch, with their feet up, watching television. Grant that the house was fucking cleaned, and yes, all the jobs and duties I had assigned to them for the day were in fact complete, but they shouldn't have been in that position. Why? Kind of disrespectful to me a little bit to want to um, lay on the couch with your feet up without asking permission to sit on the couch. So when I had gone back to these two submissives, I had said, you know, um, did mistress give you permission to sit on her furniture? And they said, no, ma'am. I said, well, what is the proper protocol for that? And they said, well, I should have texted you or called you and asked permission, but I didn't want to bother you at your dinner party. And I said, well, you still should have asked regardless. And I said, most, and at the time, those, my slaves and submissives, were not allowed to sit on my furniture. They were only able to kneel on the floor next to the couch which I had sat in. They had to ask permission to sit on the furniture as well as to use the, bat, the restroom as well as to do anything. So being in a domestic servitude live-in position, you have to ask permission to do X, Y, Z as well as do chores and things 
that are requested of you for being in service to the mistress or master, okay? So to answer the questions about domestic servitude, you know, mistress one day would love to have a harem of submissives who will support her. I would love to have my own apartment or a house and have multiple slaves living in my house and each taking care of mistress in a specific way. So where mistress doesn't need to work any longer, that the slaves and submissives would take care of her for the rest of her life and be in forever in domestic servitude and financial slavery to mistress, meaning that I get to take your paycheck and tell you what you can and you can't do with it. You live with me, the money goes to the house. Like basically when you go gambling per se and you win and all the money goes to the big jackpot, right? So it's kind of like that. Mistress is the jackpot. You get to live with mistress, cook and clean for mistress, pay for things for mistress. And in exchange, you get complete adoration, discipline, fun, punishment, and get to live out the rest of your life in a BDSM lifestyle. So, I don't know. It's kind of an interesting fact. But again, no dominant is going to let you do this for free. There's always something that you have to pay for, okay? Another slave or submissive on Instagram, or I think it was Twitter, last week asked me something about, um, you know if I had done any type of scat type play. No, I'm not really into shit, by the way. I mean, there are people that do that. That takes a special kind of person. And to me, that's not really a fetish. That's more of a, um, I want to say a mental illness. <laughs> you know, they would say a long time ago, people who play with poop or have mental illnesses. Well, I'm, I may believe that to some degree, <laughs> you know. But look, hey, whatever floats your boat. Some of the things I've done, I've done some like water sports, like piss play or, um, you know, or spitting in subs mouths, face slapping, um, bull trampling, bull kicking, CBT, nipple torture, you know, NT, CBT is cock and bull torture, nipple torture, electro play, edge play, um, Heavy-duty impact play, corporal punishment, um, over-the-knee spanking, spanking with paddles, floggers, bare, bare hands that are like cement, and uh, any kind of implements or pervertibles that people like to use, like household items like spatulas, fly swatters, um, you know, good old-fashioned belt that daddy used to wear. Um, wooden spoons, <laughs> any kind of thing that you can use to like, you know, be, I, I want to be nice and say beat the ev mother effing love out of somebody, but I'm going to be nice and say it otherwise. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. But I have to say something quick. I have to thank Spunk Loop for being a continued sponsor for our network. And I also have to thank Blitz Kid again for allowing Mistress to use the song She Dominates on the airwaves and every show I've ever done. And thank you, Blitz Kid. And actually, a lot of my fans who listen to the show tell me, Who is that? Who is that band? So I tell them, and they're like, Oh, they're really cool. So a couple of my like fans online message me and ask me, Who is that band? And I tell them, and so Blitz Kid, I hope you got some new listeners. And, um, I hope you please have been subscribing to my OnlyFans page. I've actually been uh, getting a, a bunch of new fans every day. So if you're interested in following and subscribing, it's free. It's www.onlyfans.com forward slash Mistress Candy 69. And it's M I S T R E S S. C-A-N-D-Y 69. And of course, I always answer all of my fans and followers on Twitter and Instagram. 
as well as Facebook, I have a Mistress Candy 69 fan page that I'm slowly getting back into because a couple of months back my, my Facebook was hacked or whatever and I'm still trying to regain con control over my own fan page, which is pretty interesting. So February, March, April, May, June, July. Almost six months, almost August, almost six months till I can almost get back into that page. But we do, I do have a BDSM Alive Radio Network page on Facebook, as well as the Whip Appeal Show on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, please follow and like and share all of my pages. Um, you could follow me on Twitter at MistressC69 or at BDSM Alive Radio or at the Whip Appeal. Okay, I have three Twitters. And uh, Instagram, I'm at the real mistress C69, at the real mistress candy69, and at the whip appeal show on Instagram. So I hope you guys enjoyed listening to the show tonight. I did 15 minutes earlier, and I'm probably going to do another few minutes and then call it a night because mistress has a lot of things to do this evening. I have to call back some family members. Actually, one of the last time I had did the show, my mom kept calling and texting me, if you remember. So I have to make sure I call her in a little while. And plus, Mistress is very tired. I don't know, maybe turning a year older and then having that cortisone shot in my shoulder completely wiped me out this week, I have to say. I'm kind of in a wipeout mode. <laughs> mm. But as you know, I'm sitting outside in the back so you can hear all the crickets and locusts in the air, which is kind of interesting. In the summer, you can hear all these weird bugs. But, um, but yeah, so make sure you get ready or go on the Exotica website, please. I'm, my, my radio network, network is going to be broadcasting live from Exotica this year. Um, I'm pretty sure it's... October 21st to the 23rd, and uh, I would really love if you were to see me at the convention center to come by and say hello to Mistress, and I would love to have you in, become a guest on the show while I'm at Exotica this year. So, um, kind of an interesting time, but Exotica is a lot of fun, and it's definitely something you don't want to miss if you've never gone there before. Um, so I'm actually just going to look up something real quick online. So I think this weekend, uh, Mistress Black Velvet will be back to doing her show on Sunday. She was supposed to do it last Sunday, but her daughter had gotten married. So she kind of forgot to do her show, but she will be back on the airwaves this weekend. So look for her show on Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, okay, the new normal for Exotica, which is hosted and presented by MyFreeCams.com. Uh, their schedule is they just had a show in Miami, July 15th to the 17th. It just passed. Edison, New Jersey is October 21st to the 23rd, like I had said, and I will be at that show with my network. And Washington, D.C., December 2nd to the 4th. And then they have Chicago, Illinois, which is April 21st to the 23rd. So if you're interested in buying tickets for the events, please go to EXXXOTICAEXPO.com, ExoticaExpo.com. So they actually have a lot of interesting stars to be there. Uh, our friend Alex Cole will be there. Jesse Lee will be there. Lisa Ann, uh, it's funny, I see her on Instagram. A lot of people, like, steal her picture and, like, make fake profiles for her, which is kind of funny. Um, Katie Morgan, of course, Evan Stone, who is good friends with Mistress. Uh, be nice to see him this year there. Um, who else? Seika Black will be there. Um, who else? A whole bunch of people. Coraline Jewel, I actually know her pretty well. She's on the uh, ASN Network. Uh, she does a lot of stuff with uh, ASN. And um, let's see who else. Casey Carter will be there, which is great. I look forward to seeing her, of course. Um, and Bad Dragon is a sponsor. So 
Chatterbait's a sponsor, so there will, of course, those people will all be there. There's also, who else? So, 